Hey, and welcome to another video on Performance Task 2. My name is Jerry Gonzalez, and in this video, we'll be focusing on developing a research topic within the context of the stimulus materials. So just a quick overview on this lesson, um, we want to identify the steps needed to develop a clear research topic that can lead us to an effective research question. And then secondly, we want to identify strategies to, uh, to make connections between the stimulus sources for possible areas of investigation. So in the previous video, Ms. Malloy, uh, she looked in, she looked heavily into rubric rule one. So if you haven't taken a look at that video, I strongly, strongly, strongly urge you to take a look at that video before watching this video, because a lot of what she covers is gonna be what we're building on, right? So we're building on uh, being on topic uh, within this video. So make sure that you you check her video out to uh, get an understanding of what we mean when we say on topic. Before moving on into the actual content, I want to focus on the second rubric row, which is really focusing in on understanding and analyzing context. So you'll see within this rubric, this rubric is going to be broken into two separate categories. On the, um, on the left-hand column, zero points on the right hand column, five points. So this is another example of either you get the points or you don't get the points. So in thinking about context uh, within the context of this video, um, we're really focusing in on is your research question, is your topic um, being discussed adequately, right? Do you provide the necessary information to situate your research question within a larger context. And so some typical responses that earn five points are responses that are gonna be able to provide specific and relevant details relating to the who, the what, the when, the where for all elements of your research question. And so this is important to understand right now because the development of your topic is really gonna set you up for um, Poss the possibility of earning the points for this rubric row. But on the, on the other side of things, if you pick a topic or if you end up um, identifying a topic that is too broad from the outset, it's gonna be very difficult for you to provide context for a research topic that is overly broad. So providing, um, so writing a paper in which uh, you are unable to move into the complexity of, complexities of an issue where you're making simplistic references or generalized statements about the context of a research question, simply because your research question or your research topic is a little bit too broad, is gonna be something that you want to avoid. And I'll be focusing in on that a little bit more uh, shortly. So I'm gonna stop here for a second and um, tell you to stop the video if you have not thoroughly read all of the stimulus sources. So the next part of the video is really gonna focus in on ways to develop research ideas from the stimulus sources. So it helps if you've read and gotten a clear understanding of them. And you should also consider watching the previous videos where uh, we cover some of those stimulus um, sources individually. So moving on. I want to take a moment to discuss the importance of a research topic, and I'm going to use that term very purposefully, a topic, okay, and I'm going to um, differentiate that from what, uh, from a research question, okay, so topics are going to be a little bit different than questions, and the first thing that we want to do is, within this process, is um, identifying a topic, okay, so within this pathway here, the first step that we've taken already that we should have accomplished, we have read and we have developed a clear understanding of the stimulus materials. And so the next step um, in these two yellow boxes that you are you might already be within the process of doing is to identify a legitimate connection between two stimulus sources that deals with the shared theme, okay? Now that theme, may be dealing with sports, but it may also be dealing with something else. So once again, you don't necessarily have to deal with just the, to the topic of sports, so long as you can make that um, 
that link between two individual sources, that clear and justifiable link between two uh, individual sources, you're eventually going to move into the third box, which is bridging that connection between the stimulus sources to get to an actual research topic. Now, eventually what we'll be covering in future videos is how we get from that research topic into an actual research question. So I'll show you an example of what I mean when I say that um, in a second, but we're not at the research question development phase. Right now we're gonna be looking at a research topic. So at this point, you might be asking yourself how to incorporate the stimulus sources uh, into your research question. And this is where I wanna tell you that number one, you don't need to. And number two, sometimes you shouldn't actually incorporate the sources in a way that's too literal. So the image in the center of the slide depicts a strategy that many students often attempt. So they're gonna to seek to combine elements of two different stimulus sources to formulate a research question. Now, unfortunately, this strategy sometimes fails because the sources were not originally written in a way that they were directly addressing one another. So for example, Orwell's piece was not written with the intention of being placed in a conversation with the study from Garcia on the benefits of exercise. So attempting to generate a research question merely from the stimulus sources is not always gonna be the best approach because it's often gonna lead to a topic that's too broad or not legitimately debatable or on issues that are not actual issues. So let's take a look at an example of this. So within this box, um, I've taken sort of like quotes from, uh, I've cherry picked a couple quotes from two of the sources. So within the hoops piece, there's a quote that says the specifications for a basketball court and backboard are relatively straightforward. And within the proper place for sports, there's a quote that reads, I do not know that the risk is balanced by the reward. And so a student might take that to say, hey, should the NBA create a four point line? Because the hoops is talking about the, the specifications of a basketball court and the proper place for sports is talking about the risk, right? And how a four point shot might be more risky than a three point shot, but that four point shot might be more rewarding than a three point shot. And therefore I came to this research question. So that approach, that research question right there may not necessarily work for you, right? And so this approach of lumping two quotes specifically from uh, the stimulus sources often leads to topics that are gonna be a little bit um, too broad or maybe not legitimately debatable within an academic sphere, sphere or not actual issues. So a better strategy is on your screen here. So this is what I'm gonna recommend for you. So using the previous examples, we can see that we might be able to lump those two sources. We might be able to uh, use the hoop source and the other source within the conversation to come up with the topic, okay? So if we can come up with a general topic revolving those two ideas, we can identify a shared theme. And then from that shared theme, we might be able to actually research a better topic or issue. And so the goal of developing the research topic first is gonna give you a foundation to further develop your context. So we need to make sure that before we go into an actual research question, that we have adequately researched the context behind an issue before generating a question. So question should come after a little bit of context research, okay? So this approach is going to allow for those sources, for those stimulus sources to be treated as equal to the rest of your sources, which is really what we're trying to get you to do. We don't necessarily want you to put more of an emphasis on the stimulus sources. Good and effective papers for this task are going to treat them as equal, they're gonna treat them as part of the actual conversation that's happening with this topic or issue. So a couple of questions to ask yourself within this, um, within this space. So 
these five questions are questions that I provide to my students um, when we are developing our topics. So the first question that I ask my students is what is the idea that you're considering? And so you might think that this question is very vague. It's not asking anything specific. And I'm purposefully asking my students a vague question because I want them to talk to me about what are they thinking? What's going through their mind? And more specifically, what are the two sources that you're connecting? And in this case, this is really where I want them to be specific, right? So you should be specific. You should be able to provide specific lines from the text to make that connection, right? So how did you get to your idea? So I got to my idea by connecting these two quotes or connecting these two ideas that are covered within the individual sources. And that's getting to that third idea on how do the sources not only connect to one another, but how are they also connecting to your idea that you want to research? That is going to force you to make that connection. That's going to force you to justify the situating of the stimulus sources within the larger conversation of the real world problem or issue that you're investigating. And then finally, what is the theme that is shared among the sources that you're using and why are you interested in this? So I really want, as part of my conversation with my students, I want to make sure that I'm getting to understand what is, what is the thought process that allowed for them to get to this space, because that might help to generate um, future conversations with, um, with my students. So in this case, for yourself as a current AP seminar student, these are also things that you should be sharing with your teacher or that you should be sharing with your other uh, AP seminar students, because these are conversations that are going to help to generate more ideas that might change the direction that you might be thinking of. So remember to leave yourself open minded. And so let's take a look at some strategies to identify um, possible topics for this assessment. The first thing that you can do is um, to look for areas where you can apply. So in this case, uh, you should look to ways in which you can apply the historical text within this, um, within this stimulus pack to a real world um, problem or issue that is more current. So the sporting spirit and the proper place for sports are two sources that identi I identified as more um, within the world of history, right? And you could find many different um, modern day issues that you can apply those concepts that you can apply those arguments to. A second strategy that you can consider is to identify diverging perspectives among those sources. So remember that each of the sources within this packet has a variety of different arguments. Uh, authors might be coming from different backgrounds. All of the authors are bringing different perspectives to this. So this is a space where you're really going to want to see where you can engage these sources to have a conversation with one another and then use that, that conversation as an entry point for your other sources, right? So then you want to bring your other sources to the dinner table to ensure that they are going to be able to converse with more than just two sources, right? And then finally, and probably most importantly, you should consider other feelings or emotions or experiences that can be associated with sports. So we have four other sources in this pack that fall within this category. We have the meaning of Serena Williams, psychological benefits of sports, we have the esports source, and then we have the, uh, the hoop source. So I want you to expand on sort of like, what is the meaning of sports? What is the purpose of sports, right? And we can use those four sources to really start getting somewhere else with, within those sources or within uh, possible areas of investigation, but not only just within sports. So you can also look beyond that obvious theme. There are so many other areas um, of investigation, so many other thematic connections that um, can be linked within these different sources. So remember that sports do not exist in a vacuum. 
it's very difficult to just say like, hey, stick to sports. And so that is something that is very, very present within society today, right? That, that debate. And so you should be looking for areas or you, you can look for areas within those sources to see where that can possibly take you. So now that we've uh, discussed some of the ways to formulate a research topic, let's take a look at some of the problem areas that you should avoid to ensure that your topic has a solid foundation. So I also teach AP research and we always, we always tell our students that if the question fails, the study fails, and ultimately the paper fails. In AP seminar, as Mrs. Malloy covered, if the connection to the stimulus source fails, the question fails, and ultimately the paper is gonna fail as well. So a few things that you should avoid include cherry picking quotes from the stimulus that, that are gonna take you in a direction away from the theme shared by multiple sources. And I covered that earlier um, within with that like four point line uh, debate there. And you should also avoid mischaracterizing the context of the source. So it's okay to apply the message of the source to a different concept or, or to a different problem or issue, but it is not okay to misinterpret the source or to use a quote from a source in a way that doesn't represent the original intention or the original argument um, of the author. And finally, avoid using the source as a jumping off point. Remember, if you can remove the inclusion of the source from the paper, it's usually not gonna be a good uh, connection. So what should we take away here? Remember that connections between stimulus sources should be made to a more focused research topic. And once that topic has been identified, you should proceed with um, the research process as you have in the past. So it's gonna follow a very common structure um, or a very similar structure as it has with um, previous research uh, projects. So next steps here. I want you to think about identifying one to two topics that you can research based on the connection to the stimulus uh, materials. And once you've done that, you should conduct some preliminary research on each of those topics. What I usually recommend is to read two or three non-academic sources to gain a general understanding of the topic and then use that to determine if there's enough there to form a focused topic that could be researched further to eventually come up with the research question. I want you to think about those five questions that I covered a little bit earlier in the video and discuss that possible uh, topic with your peers. Maybe ask your teacher a couple of questions there to see if this is something that, um, that can lead you to further investigation. We'll be taking a look at more on research questions in the next video. Thanks for watching.